time I lived across the street from one of the co-owners of Mid Asphalt. There are other things that happened. I mean, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, you know, um, you, just to give you another example, you do business here, in the city of Macedonia, with Sagamore Soil. Mr. Digatano worked for Sagamore Soil two days a week before he was made service director. The only thing here is people, ethically, you have to reveal those relationships. You're doing contracts with them. It doesn't mean those people can't be used. It just means that you would appropriate precautions so that you wouldn't get accused of favoritism or something. Um, once again, a lot of this has to be uh, determined as whether you think it's improper, unethical, conducted incorrectly, or it's a conflict of interest, or it's none of the above. And obviously, there's potential for some criminal stuff here um, if someone pursues it. This report also has been turned over to state agencies and federal agencies. They're very interested in my 37-page report. And as I said before, I will say it again, Everything that's in my report in its totality, not every single thing has been proven. There are sections in there I am explicit about, and I say these are things that have been reported to us. These are things potentially to investigate further. It doesn't mean by us. It could be by someone else or it could be by nobody. It could be internally. All I want to say is a lot of things that are in this report have been verified and documented. And there are things in this report we just didn't have the time, money, or energy to be able to pursue because we thought enough was enough. The old saying is, how much do I beat the dead horse is a true saying. And I'm turning this over to counsel. They'll ask questions. They have the right to. I have the right to ask questions back. And then they have to decide when, when I leave what action they want to take. You know, an action to take can be everything. It can be A to Z. It can be calmly. It can be aggressive. You know, it can be whatever you want it to be. But I do want to stress that the council here needs to make a determination because one thing is for sure. We'll argue all day. I'm sure Mr. Deemer will want to argue about whether something's ethical, conflict, or interest, or criminal. But I will argue one thing, and I will say it at me. There is a ton in this report that's improper. Simply improper. And if it's improper, it does not de deserve to have a leadership role. So at the least minimum, that has to be determined what's improper and, and the direction to go. So I'll stop there. I know you all have plenty of questions, so I'll, I'll let you ask them. Yes, uh, I do have some comments and some questions, and I'm going to start with a couple of things about the investigations. It's, it, again, I'm giving you my opinion. I've been through this in great detail. When we passed the budget in 2014, Mr. Deemert was very unhappy. And there are a number of emails from his, uh, from his account and from uh, Tom Hanselix that indicate how unhappy they were and how Mr. Schwab, our finance director, needed to pay them in the manner they wished to be paid. Uh, there were appeals to various agencies, the Attorney General, to the Auditor of State, to a number of folks, and actually to the OPERS organization about uh, the issue of whether or not we would be paying for his uh, PERS. None of those were sustained in favor of Mr. Demert. And the Auditor of State made very clear in a statement to Scott Squab that he was not to pay him out of any account that didn't have an appropriation. There was a zero appropriation. There. <coughs> uh, so what we have there is the beginning of, up to that point, uh, shall we say there were a number of areas where there were minor conflicts, but this led to a major confrontation between the finance director and Mr. Deemer. When this investigation 
process started is also disputed. I will tell you that I reviewed every bill between 2011 and 2013, end of that, beginning of 2014, all the way up to the point we had bills at the point I reviewed them. And I never saw any investigation indicated of the finance director until April of 2014 after this big dispute started. So I think number one with, in all of this is Mr. Deemert, if he was asked to be by the mayor to investigate, should have recused himself and it should have said, if you need to have an investigation, there needs to be someone brought in from the outside because I've been in conflict with this man over payment of my, of, of my remunerations. So when this was presented to us, middle September, there were several months that went on here. There were additional emails, which are all public record, between Mr. Schwab and Mr. Deemer. When it was brought to the council by the mayor, there was a package that was given to us for review of eight allegations, which have been repeated over and over and over in these various reports. Uh, and there were two additional allegations which were provided via email at that time, which related to uh, Mr. Digotano being told that unless they hired uh, Mr. Schwab's son, that uh, there would be somehow that uh, Scott would not be willing to be helpful to Mr. Digotano. And the other one was about what Mr. Ladd said about Mr. Molendek. So we looked at everything at that time, the council along with the mayor, there was an extensive review of all of this and the council indicated to the mayor that they did not think that this particular set of allegations was properly investigated or sustained. And that if we, that I said at that time, and I said via email, which is public record, that I felt that there needed to be specifically further investigation of the two issues that were raised subsequent to the package arriving, which had to do with the relationship of Scott's son to any, the hiring of Scott's son to any uh, problems with Mr. Digitano and Mr. Mullendick uh, having any reason why, there would be a reason why Mr. Lab would have to uh, consider hiring him. So I specifically said, I think there needs to be a polygraph of this. Now sworn statements and polygraphs, because at that time those were not sworn statements. Uh, we went to, the mayor chose to disregard our advice and went forward with an attempt to remove Mr. Schwab. We then rejected that based on the tenant the 10 allegations that were made were insufficient and didn't have the proper information with them. We said, no, as a council, we're not doing that. We had a regular council meeting. It was in our charter that we, as a council, have to, have to also concur in the removal. The majority have to concur in the removal. And the reason for that is very simple. The finance director performs a fiduciary role in the city, just like the uh, various uh, finance officers in the townships. That involves making sure that people aren't taking money or improperly or doing other things which are in conflict with the financial interests of the city. So the finance director is under fiduciary obligation and as the Auditor of State made very clear to Mr. Schwab, he can't do what he just wants. He has to make sure that even though the mayor wants something or the law director wants something, it has to be proper and legal. So at that time, no, I, was, uh, excuse me, sir, I'm talking. Council will call a point of order. This is 
Yeah, we, their investigator, we should have an opportunity. Well, you will question. have an opportunity. Well, well, could I, I ask on. my question? No, no, no. I'm not piling on, sir. Jill, I am stating. Excuse Listen, me. Jill, point of no. Could I no, ask sir. No, sir. Jill, Jill, yeah, excuse point excuse of order. Me, Council, Council is going to talk This is our time to ask questions, not the administration. Could we no. ask our questions uh, of the No, no, ma'am. I am talking. Excuse me. I'm talking as soon as Sylvia's done, we questions, not just we make a statement. And all we're having Jesus. there is a as statement. As soon as Sylvia's done, you ask can have your question. chance. So we can ask more questions. I have a whole laundry list of questions. Well, you right? certainly are going to have the time to make them. Would you, if you, if you it's look at the, I have been of accused of a number. I have been accused okay. of a number of things, oh. and I intend to. Jan, Sylvia has the floor. Point. I have the floor, please. Okay. Bottom line was the mayor restored Mr. Schwab to duty on September 29th. In the face of all those allegations and our review of them, and the bottom line was Mr. Schwab was restored to duty. So this investigation process did not lead to the removal of Mr. Schwab. That did not happen. He was restored to duty. And what happened next? Mr. Schwab discovered that the mayor had made improper use of the senior low income program. With that point in, in mind, Mr. Sch Mr. Schwab forwarded that information to the chief of police, Mr. Bolden. There was, within a few days of that occurring, Mr. Schwab was re-escorted out of the building. And I, con I conclude, based on the information that I saw, that he was taken out because he reported, as he properly should, that there, were, there was evidence of improper use of the senior low income program by the mayor. That's a, pro that's a proper thing for him to do. With regard to the, what happened next is, the mayor, he was, Mr. Schwab was put on paid administrative leave. The next thing that happened is, we thought we would have an investigation proceeding on these matters, and we did, we did ask uh, the, actually the council president, Mr. Engel, asked that this be referred to the county prosecutor's office and the uh, sheriff's department, which is the proper place for it to go. Ended up to be not the case that, that it went there. It went to uh, basically the attorney general's office and then subsequently to the auditor of state. A lot of this process and the long time it's taken was because it takes a long time when you're doing those things. We did not find out results, no criminal wrongdoing until much later. We, we as an organization, <laughs> I believe, had every right to expect appropriate strong action on any of these allegations. I did not know about some of the allegations that were in the report. The mayor has basically, cons with Mr. Dimos' report, basically uh, the mayor, from what I can see in a letter to some friends that got posted on Facebook, the mayor has confirmed that he did receive, for example, this uh, asphalt walkway put in by one of the city contractors free. Now, is that ethical? No, it's not. It's clear. From the Ohio law, ethics laws, that's not clear. It's ethical for a private businessman to do that, to have an arrangement. It is because he's representing the city and the financial interests of the city, it is not ethical to do that. Now, the mayor has basically confirmed most of this in this letter. So you can say that it's no longer an allegation, it's something he agrees, including all these other issues of spending money out of his campaign account. So here's, here's what I'm going to say about all of this. Uh, we have already seen the consequences of this. 
The leader sets the standard. The leader sets the standard. When I was managing over 100 people and uh, some of my first <laughs> jobs within the Department of Defense when I was a larger scale manager, I had some statements on my board that I put there that I wanted every person who was a manager working for me to see. And I said the priority order in this organization is first, do the right thing. Don't be doing things that other people can question you about or say that you had the wrong intent. And what we have here is a situation where, in my opinion, again, Mr. Deemer should have never been involved in any investigation of this situation because Mr. Schwab and he were in a conflict, I think unfairly, honestly, but we're in a conflict over this. And second, what is the standard? Is there a disparate treatment of people who do things? And the answer is yes, there is. So bottom line, I want to make sure that everyone understands. This has nothing to do with any personal feeling I have about the mayor. I, I've never said anything publicly negative about the mayor and I don't intend to. What I have said is when he's done something wrong, I have said this is wrong, period. And I have a right to do that and I should do that, but I, it hasn't been a personal issue on anything. And so as far as I'm concerned, all this, the accusations that are thrown around simply come to this. You're caught and now you want to blame other people. Shouldn't be doing that. And from my standpoint, I want to make sure that I'm on the record. I had no input in how this was investigated and I had no input on any process that they used. We hired this person because he has a good reputation as an investigator. I didn't know him before, I know him now. That's all, thank you. Okay, we'll let Jan, Jan go on please, if you're ready. I was going to, since it's a council meeting, I was going to ask the mayor who usually runs the council. Yeah, well, I do have one. administration ought to have an opportunity to ask questions, don't you think? Well, the agenda the states that questions and comments are going to come from the member council members first and then the administration. I'll defer to council asking Joe and then I'll defer to you. Right. Okay. The, f the first one I would like is Mr. Uh, Dimoff. You didn't read your disclaimer at all that identifies through the last pages of this report, did you? You might have wanted to have done that legally because in here, um, you made a lot of statements, he did this, he did that, he did this, but your disclaimer specifically says this is still under investigation. None of this is truly verified, if I could read it. And, and I think that's important for folks to realize because I don't want you to set yourself up here, but uh, you know, in fact, I, I, you know, I have concern because there are, um, you have a disclaimer and on all of the past on the last part of your report, not on um, the one on Mr. Spot, but on the last part. The Jay, first question you know I have is, is when I read this report, um, it lists in here all the council members, and you made the comment that we're all connected and you interviewed. I was never interviewed, never approached to be interviewed, so I'm assuming that was an oversight on your part. But I do have a, a very valid question of. In here at list, Jan Tully, at and employee, what relevance is my employment Pardon? to this report? What relevance is my outside employment to this report? Where, where are you referencing, Jan? Pardon me? Where are you referencing? Page five. Page six. I'm sorry. I, I just want to know why our outside employment was listed. Page six of mine, but I print out different. No, no, I just print uh, I was handed 
this uh, list, um, and I just incorporated it into the list of potential people that we might interview. Uh, we added a few, but I was handed that list, and that's how I received it. What relevance was my job? Um, Mr. Mr. Dunlop, you had asked us to gather names of everybody that works for the city and council members and everybody and what our titles were and what we did outside of council. I believe that might clear that up. Who so asked that? And I, who provided Mr. it? Mr. Demoff had asked for it and I think Sylvia provided it. Did you provide it? Yeah. Yes. What relevance was it? I, I have a concern. My company has a concern. Sure. What relevance? Yeah. Um, the, the only relevance it has is if we wanted to attempt to contact you, it would have gave us an avenue to contact you at. And at that time, if we would have contacted you, say at at t then you would have had the right and the privilege to say, hey, I can't talk to you now, or I can talk to you now, or I can meet you at lunch, or I can give you another number to give. We did not need, uh, nor did we talk to you, um, but I asked for an ability to be able to contact people, and the only way it means was uh, potentially maybe we had to contact some people through work. If it offends you, um, I apologize to you here in front of that everybody. It doesn't offend me. And I just find it irrelevant. No, and I, I also ask the question then, if your reason was to be able to get a hold of me, there are no phone numbers here. So how would you know how to get a hold of me at AT&T? We have 100,000 employees. Just a question. My other question would be, if this was contact list, why is Ms. Darrell's previous employment not mentioned, but you mentioned Sylvia's retirement, which is irrelevant? I, I just, this is irrelevant in the beginning. Yeah. Well, Thanks. all I can tell you is when we, we, we got a list of names and, and, and okay. contacts and potential when we started out, and we were trying to figure out at the beginning of how we would make contact and who we would make it through. But the bottom line is initially when we started, we had a hodgepodge of names and people and employments and some phone numbers and some not. And all I can tell you is that we, what we gathered, we put together, and wanted to be honest and let you know what we were what we were provided and not hide details from anybody and that's why this report's pretty thorough. Okay, um, so the list was provided to you. That kind of explains why some people's mentioned some isn't. My apologies there. It just makes it's illogical. As as time went on, Jan, realistically, that list wasn't used as much as I had, had planned or thought we could. We really had to go out and, and do our own hard work to find the right contacts and phone numbers and that, especially after we were not allowed to interview employees you know, during the work day. So uh, once again, we did the best we could on it. Is it and I'm going to say this again, is this a perfect report? No, it's not a perfect report. Do you have a list of who actually was interviewed then? Pardon? Because if you're saying this kind of is the list, but it's not the list, but no. there is a list. Do you no, have a this list? This is a list that we potentially at the beginning were provided, that we added names to, that we are saying that we might go to and interview those people, and that we might not. It was a start off potential list, to be honest with you. We went a lot further than that list, and a lot of the names on the list we never approached. Yeah, I, I just think it would be who those of us who read the report to know who actually you spoke to, who you did not speak to, because there was a lot of information said tonight, but we don't know who said it. You know, you said an unknown employee. There's in here, it says employee a lot. It doesn't say who was that employee. Is it Mr. Spob? Is it a council member who should not be considered an employee? And so I find that disconcerting when I'm trying to read a report and understand who said what, I, it's not clear. So take that to heart, that's all. Okay, um, thank you. Does each person that did get interviewed, did they sign a sworn statement as done by the previous investigation that was done? The biggest issue we had is almost the majority of the people we talked to, they don't even want their names mentioned. That, that was our biggest hurdle. Um, once again, I'll stress to you, I wish that they would provide their name and provide a written statement. And at the beginning, as I 
reiterated, if I get two people telling me I don't like Scott, <coughs> I don't like Mr. Ladd, I don't approve of the mayor, I can understand there being disagreement. But when you have dozens of employees calling you and saying, I will talk to you under one condition, you could not even remotely begin to tell them who I am. Why? Why? Are they uh, this is, uh, well, but wait, I have another question. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, we're not done with the... Uh, you can't interrupt, okay? Okay, Thank yes. Okay. Just, just In answer to the question of why, they were just very, very cautious. They believe that retaliation is a very strong theme, and we even supported that, you know, at the beginning. Once again, I'm going to tell you, if you hear someone complain, then you go, hey, disgruntled employees. But let me remind you, you just lost two HR directors. Excuse we me, is that interview. relevant to this discussion right now? Yeah, Can I continue with my question? You're, you're Do you know why one left? One left for a better job? I am answering. Can we fault her for I'm leaving? I'm trying to finish the answer to a question, but go ahead. Well, because it's not relevant. My, my other question would be, there's some legal opinions in here. Which lawyer provided you those opinions so I can talk to him about it? As it's stated in here, and as I stated here several times, and as they taped in that, I said, this will have to go forward. It's everything and anything potentially from improper, unethical, conflict of interest, and or criminal. I have said that three times tonight, and I have said that I did not make that determination. I said that that is a determination that needs to go forth and be determined by others outside of me. All I'm doing is reporting the facts of what was reported to me. I will leave it up to you as counsel or whoever to determine what level that you want that to be. I will leave it up to the state and federal agencies, you know, to make that determination. I'm not discussing your allegations from page 40. I'm, I am purely focusing on okay. why this report was created, which was the accusations against Mr. Spop. That's where I'm focusing right now. Okay, the rest talk, of this, talk. the di disclaimer states, <coughs> is not verified and therefore needs further work. So my question would be, if when it's stated in here, a legal opinion about something Mr. Spob did, who gave us that opinion? I think that's a fair question. We were asked to investigate. We investigated, we asked questions, we got answers. We provided a polygraph, we got answers to polygraphs. We have other employees who are verifying the action that we responded to and that we reported. You know, that is the function of what we're doing. So you did not have a lawyer? Pardon? You, there was no lawyer that provided legal guidance on certain issues, such as if it was okay to post-date or pre-date or the, that kind of thing? We did not ask. Okay. We were trying to determine the accusations that we were provided, whether they took place or not. Okay, so there wasn't a lawyer. That's all I needed was a yes or a no. Okay. Um, there was a comment made in here about Ms. Flanagan. Is that for public <clears throat> disclosure, Mr. Demon? I thought there had been a previous, prior to my returning to this seat, lawsuit that was gag ordered. <laughs> As you know, the city has no connection to this report. The administration has no connection to this report. It was not submitted to us for review, and there were never any questions to us. So whether we, or not it's legal or not, there's a whole lot here that we will talk about. Right. Mr. Demer, um, on the Macedonia website, Mary Beth Wartz report is posted on the website. Mary Beth Wartz. Um, Mr. Dimoff was given Mary Beth Wart's report, but it's on the website. Mary Beth Wart's is the one who openly talks about Ms. Flanagan, not Mr. Dimoff. So it's on the website, and if, and if, for my understanding, well, actually that here. was supposed, well, because he got it off Mary Beth Wart's report, which is on the website that the city has posted. So. I did not believe her name was mentioned. Well, I, I think it was. This is Mary Beth's report is in here. Oh. In this document that Mr. Dimoff created, in here is response to all of hers. And just for the record, who the heck is Mary Beth Wartz? Mary Beth Wartz was an independent 
um, lawyer of um, works for the employee. Oh God, I'm going to some counsel. Human it resource escapes law. me, but we were look. You know, when Ms. Hannikin just talked about how this process come about, one of the things we talked about was hiring an independent investigator. Well, months went by, and none was hired. Ms. Hannikin specifically told us it would not be anyone out of Summit County nor Cuyahoga County. So I am a, an acquaintance of a prosecutor in Geauga County who gave me some names, as well as someone else gave me some names from this employee council. Council chose not to move forward with any of them. The mayor made an independent decision to move forward since we were stalled. We're paying someone to sit at home. Something needed to move forward. So when you hear this Mary Beth Wirtz, she is a lawyer. She's a highly regarded lawyer um, in the industry for HR. She came back with her report. So if you look at the 45 pages, you'll see her report and then the rebuttal. So you understand that there's both are included in here, but that should clarify that. So um, I think you won't replace names. You won't do this. That's all I have right now, Mayor. Thank you for indulging me. So, uh, Nick, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Actually, more of a statement. <clears throat> First and foremost, I think it's uh, appropriate that we, we pay homage to uh, the veterans. Yesterday was Memorial Day. Uh, we haven't mentioned that here tonight, so I think that that's truly appropriate that we, we give our respect to those who have served. So I'll start with that. Uh, the first thing I want to bring up is the investigation is about Scott. Um, we often get into the administrative and legislative debate. As long as I've been up here, I tend to stay out of the administrative decision making. There's things that come to our, our, our lap that we need to deal with. I, I have been a strong proponent of saying no, a lot of things we, we shouldn't deal with. Uh, that could be a lot of different things going on, gamesmanship, whatever you want to call it, I try to stay out of it. This particular situation w was brought to council to make a decision. We were forced to make a decision one evening, and we did. Uh, that kind of stalled everything, and to date, we spent over $100,000, including his pay. $100,000. Here I am, I'm thinking about the rain outside, and I'm thinking about the people on Ledge Road and at North Bedford flooding, and we got hundred grand going into the toilet. I'm concerned about my community. I'm concerned about where we're going. I'm not even going to talk about these investigations. To be honest with you, I've had it. I, I, I don't know why we sit here and bicker about it. Mr. Swab, you know darn well that if we brought you back, this is not going to be a, a, an environment conducive for you or anyone else working in it. It's not, it's not appropriate. There's a lot of different ways we could have handled this. We could have went in an executive session and tried to work something out. I proposed that. I was denied. So we're over $100,000, still with no decision, sitting here with our, our, our hands under our butts. My opinion is it's time to move on, stop the bickering, and concentrate on what's important. We've got roads that need attention. We've got stormwater issues that need a lot of attention. That's what we need to focus on, not, not Mr. Swab and the finance director anymore. My opinion hasn't changed. I've read all the reports. I'm going to stick with what I felt all along from what I've read and, and what my decision is, but my focus is on the community and not the finance director anymore. So I, I'm, I'm done with it. I won't make any more statements about it, and I will not bicker about it. Thank you. I don't have any questions of Mr. Dimoff. Thank you for uh, attending tonight and making a presentation. M oh, Mr. Dimoff, I'd like to thank you um, for your time this evening. And uh, I have uh, some of the questions that after I read your report, which I found a little troubling, is um, our mayor, our, um, did you speak to uh, Mary Beth Wartz at all, the investigator that was hired by uh, the mayor? Uh, I had some brief email exchanges with her. Uh, I had several requests for some documents from her uh, on the interviews. Um, and those documents uh, did not did not, those additional documents did not come to me um, until we had the report already finished. And mm -hmm. in. Do you know why they did not come to you? Um, I had fairness to her. I think there was some confusion on whether she could give them to me or whether she was supposed to or whatever. Uh, 
don't know for sure, but I, I sense, you know, I think that she went back and I think she contacted you, the mayor, or Mr. Deaver here, and, and one of them or both of them told her it was okay at that point. And she, she did eventually uh, send it. I don't know for a fact why. Right. Um, one, of the, one of the troubling questions I have, when I read uh, Mr. Demoff's report and I read uh, Mr. Uh, Demert's report and I read Mary Beth Wartz's report and I read the auditor's report, and I found it very strange that Mary Beth Wartz is a human resource attorney and that's what she specializes in. And then after reading Mr. Demoff's report, I had no knowledge until the report came out that uh, Mary Beth Wartz, the attorney that was hired by the, uh, the mayor, uh, she never ever talked to the Human Resource Department here in the city of Macedonia, Ohio. And I learned in the report that Mr. if she had, and she had told Mr. Demoff, according to the report that I read, that the, the other re, um, investigators would have learned a lot from her, okay, um, about Mr. Swab and about other things that were occurring in the city. And uh, I do not have knowledge of what those other things about the city are, but Mr. Demoff does. And I've not asked him that, but I really found that very, very strange that nobody's asking that question. And I also found it strange that Mary Beth Wartz never interviewed payroll. Payroll here in the city of Macedonia has worked with Scott Swab the longest and has been directly connected with him not only do they work next door to each other in their offices and stuff, but she has documented everything all these years between her and Scott and human resource and so forth, and nobody ever, ever took the time to speak to these two, two um, departments. Am I right or wrong on that, Mr. Demoff? Uh, yeah, the, the only exception to that is um, Ms. Attorney Wirtz did ask um, the HR director where to find some of the uh, guidelines for the city and the HR director did direct her to those sites. Mm -hmm. uh, but she told me that was about the only conversation she had. And then some of the employees that have contacted you that want to stay anonymous, um, they have gone to the human resource um, about a lot of issues that were going on with the, in the city for a couple years now, am I right? In employees stated that they went to both human resource directors over time um, and talked to them about what's called personality conflicts, mm -hmm. uh, concerns would be a good word, and that they went to the HR directors over some concerns and not necessarily to solve them, not necessarily for anything, but didn't really know who to go to felt intimidated by their direct supervision in their divisions or areas. Um, and the latest HR director um, did confirm that several employees did come to her with concerns about the management and the style of management and some of the intimidation that was going on. <coughs> she did tell me she felt that there wasn't anything that she could do she felt sorry for a few of them, but she said it really was out of her control or her realm. And she was more than willing to talk to them. And what that did for us on the investigation is we have to be careful. We need to confirm what disgruntled employees are saying. I mean, a disgruntled employee can really say a lot of stuff that could be untrue. And what ways that you verify that in investigations is number one, is there more than one person saying the same thing? We had numerous saying the same thing. They would tell us, well, I went to so-and-so and talked to so-and-so. We would go to so-and-so and say, hey, by the way, did, did anybody ever come and talk to you about a specific situation? And they'd go, oh, yeah, you know, Tim Dimoff did about three months ago. So we would use what we call variance verification to verify what someone would tell us. We would not just take it, you know, by their word. And we were able to cross-reference a lot of this information and verify it. And then the other thing we did is we looked at past practices of people who left and their experiences, because now that they left as employees, they're a little bit more 
open to talk about their experiences. So we use that as some of our verification too, you know. And like anything else, I'm sure not every single employee tells every single truth. But one thing I can tell you, I can stand here before you and tell you, a lot of what those employees said was verified. Was verified from other people who they went to and told this to or whatever. And there seems to be a little bit of a history of that kind of action. So I'm going to tell you that, like anything else, I'm sure there's a couple bad apples that were out to just sink the ship. But a majority of these employees are hardworking, good citizens. And we were able to really uh, uh, verify uh, with them and, and get some statements. So that's the best we can do when nobody wants to come forward and give their name. We have to work with the tools that we have. And Mr. Demoff, um, I uh, also would like to say that um, I'll tell you right now, um, I was never interviewed by uh, Joe Deemer when he was doing his investigation. I don't know about the rest of the council. I was never interviewed by Mary Beth Wartz, um, the, the one that the mayor had hired. Um, I don't know about the rest of the council. And uh, um, <coughs> I did um, speak to you at times when you called me or something came up and I asked you to look into it pertaining to something. Um, that's my communication with you. And, uh, and then if you had questions, I answered your questions. So um, if you had questions, um, and I, I think initially because um, Sylvia and I are the ones that actually came to you and actually initially hired you, and I don't know if that was because of our initial contact. But um, I, um, I really like to thank you for your time in this. And uh, uh, are you charging us for any of this overtime? <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask one you, question? And this is not of Mr. Dimoff. Okay. Is this of the police department and the law department? The investigation of these allegations, when did they truly begin? End of 2012. Thank you. The allegation has been made tonight. This was done as a retaliation. I think it should be noted that this investigation started in 2012. That's two years before any change was made to legislation of how a law department was to be paid. Right. And, and I can also state that. The administration, we would like to ask. Yeah, and, and I, I can also state that one of the things I asked for was Scott Swab's personal employee uh, folder. And in that personal folder, for everybody to know, Scott Swab has never been written up for nothing not even in 2012, not 2013, not 2014. And uh, I guess 2000, well, at the end of 2014, he was put on uh, leave. But just so you know, he was never written up for anything in his personnel file, just for your record. Thank you. My, my last question, again, is not for you, Mr. Dimmel. I think we've gone through the report. Um, my question, again, would be for uh, the police department. Polygraph testing has general considerable scientific and public controversy that it can be or cannot be manipulated, not by the polygraph tester. Let me say that. Including the United States Supreme Court does not agree to the validity of polygraph tests. I ask you, um, because we've talked about this before in a whole other situation, is there any concern of a polygraph test being valid? Well, I think what you just read answers that question. I mean, I'm not a polygraph operator. I can't speak to it. But there is a reason they're not admissible in court. Uh, stipulated tests could be, uh, just like stipulated voice stress can be. But I mean, I think what you read answers the question already. What do you use? Is there something other than polygraphs that are now used, since well, most courts consider it inadmissible? There's, uh, there's nothing that's admissible unless it's stipulated. The, the test we use is a computer voice uh, stress analyst type testing, and even that is not uh, admissible in court unless it's stipulated prior to by defense and prosecution that a test would be stipulated to. Thank you. Mr. Uh, you know, do you want Lieutenant to Yakubovich, I have one com two more comments because of what was said here. One is, you do use polygraphs when you hire employees, is that correct? Not by my choice. 
Well, I'm not asking you if it's your choice. I'm, I'm asking you if that's a fact. It is a it, fact, isn't it? Yes, it Yes, is and it's fact. an investigative tool. That's why it's being used. Second, the fact is that I reviewed in detail every, every detailed part of the billing that I received from uh, our law department, and there is absolutely no evidence, and there's evidence of other investigations going on, nothing until April of 2014. So the statement that someone is making that they did it in 2012, I do not believe because there's no evidence of it. And there is evidence in 2014, April and beyond. You know, prior to April, we were on retainer. Well, yes, but we had details from your retainer and we had details, some details on investigations. So let's go to the third point, here, which has been made, which concerns the expenditure of funds. I wanna be clear. The council has spent zero money on investigations, zero. The only people who have spent money have been the administration. And Mr. Schwab should be on duty. We restored him to duty. The mayor restored him, restored him to duty until he reported the mayor's misuse of the senior low income program. So. Whether it's 100,000, it's probably more than that because we've hired somebody else to be giving us reviews. Uh, it's not a finance director, but a finance person. So when you look at the totals, Mrs. Wirtz got $10,000. Mr. Schwab has got an X amount of his salary. And whatever else was been paid to this finance uh, person. But we, as council, have asked him to be restored to duty. There's no reason why he should not be restored to duty based on the information that we have at this point. And in fact, everything that points us to issues points us to not just one person, but several people. So let me just say this, this wh however much money this is, it is not due to the council's expenditures, period. The rebuttals from uh, administration. The administration. <laughs> I have yeah. to dim off. I'm Joe Beamer, the whom you've written so kindly about. Uh, would you mind taking an oath, of, uh, uh, an oath before you testify further about some of my questions? I'm happy to. Yes, sir. Do you mind? We've got a court reporter here. I'd like to. You've used the word conflict. You've used the word criminal. You've used the word unethical. We'd like to make sure that your statements are something you're willing to stand under oath about. If you're willing to do that. That's not necessary. One more time. Well, I just want you to have the court. Mayor, I, I think our law department would know if it's necessary or not necessary. Well, it's not law department. It's not necessary. Um, Vince. Can you keep it quiet here? Gentlemen, listen. Let's just keep quiet and listen to what they have to say. Please, no other disruptions, okay? We can all listen and let them have the floor. Can he take an oath? Are you willing to take one? Are you willing to take one too, Mr. Absolutely. Oh, of like course you, you would be. Well. Listen, we I'll have not had anybody. Can not interrupt again, please? Oh, oh, I'm going to. It's an hour and a half. An hour and a half. The council has had the floor and Mr. Dimov. Can the administration have a while? Well, it says. Uh, understanding here. This is quite unfair. Why invite us if it's going to be a kangaroo uh, court? The three of you could have had your own meeting with Mr. Dumont. You didn't need us. Are you so, going to go on, Joe? Are you going on like this, or are you going to allow for me to just say something? Can I move on? Certainly you can move on. Okay, thank you. Are you willing to take an oath? Are you willing to take a polygraph? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a polygraph. Will you take one? Oh, absolutely. I'll take then one. take an oath of office tonight. Why do you want to respond with a different question? Because, you know, we've been talking about integrity all night. Okay, then let's now, move on. You don't want to take an oath. I want to take an oath in a, in a court of law. I want to have a discussion here, and I don't think my integrity is in question here. You have said things that are in question, and why are you talking to the audience? The agenda said you were supposed to be here tonight to present the council and the administration, and you've had your back to them the whole time. I will talk to the people of the city because it is my belief that the people of the city are the ones that suffer the most. They're the ones that get the, the positive and the negative from this. And I want to clarify.
clarify, Mr. Deemer, I will answer all your questions tonight because I have integrity. And I want to tell you that, including with Jan, the reason I did not interview counsel, including the people that were responsible for that the payment, one of my including you, including Jan and the mayor, is because we have our why would I interview the people that are being accused and what would that further? I need to talk to people outside that who objectively can give me the truth. And you want to talk about a kangaroo court? You're trying to turn it into one. That's right. And I'm going to tell you, professionally, I will answer every one of your questions right now. Then let's if I can't, then I will tell you I can't. And I would like to accommodate you. And let's move forward as you have asked. That's all and I, I ask. appreciate it. Thank can you. I ask one quick question? You said you didn't interview us because you didn't want to interview those who were accused. Did I, I did not right? want to interview people here that were accused, such as the mayor and Mr. Diener and Mr. You know, and I did not want to get influenced by the council. At the beginning, I had hoped to interview the council, and I determined and decided not to interview council members on purpose because of the division of the political stuff, and I wanted to stay away from that kind of influence. And I really, we soon found out that we <coughs> needed to seek people that had nothing to do Okay, it, you've with answered the, my question because your statement yeah. said the accused and I wanted to know what I was You are not included in the accused, Jan. First I heard that. My right. mistake, I apologize if you took it that way. Okay. So go ahead, let's try to keep my questions concise if you can keep your answers concise. Yes, sir, go ahead. I understand you don't want to go under oath and that's your decision, you don't have to. But I understand and I take it as though I am under oath and I'm not going to ask you anything.